Hello everyone, this is Ben with ERP Connect Consulting and in this video we're going to walk you through how to use our recurring sales document functionality inside of our invoice and statement delivery tool. Now, this is going to apply to both recurring sales orders and sales invoices that you see up on the screen. And some of the main use cases include subscription billing, recurring billing, and anything that you're going to auto ship month by month or week by week, similar to an Amazon subscribe and save experience, right? So we're going to jump right into it in the dashboard that we're seeing currently. So this is going to be where you see all of your recurring sales documents. Think of these as the templates. So once the templates are made, then we can either generate them manually or we can run job queues to run them every day, every week, every month, however often you uh, decide. So first is the setup. We need to create these recurring sales documents inside of the system. Now, if we go into any one of these documents, what you'll see is that it looks like a basic sales order or a sales invoice, right? It's got all your header and line information. Now, what's going to be a little bit different is in this external document number, as well as the descriptions down here, we've got some merge fields. So three is going to indicate the month, four is going to indicate the year. Now you can see here, I've got license fees for month ending. So I'll want that in this case to say May uh, 2023. Uh, I can also do that in the external document number up here. And then we also have some recurring settings. So what these recurring settings are going to do, let me edit this real quick. The recurring settings, it's going to say, okay, how often do you want to send this? So the frequency I'm doing one M minus CM, this is going to make it go out to the first day of the next month. So every month on the first day, I want this to be generated. How do you want it to post? I can either create it and leave it open. So that's just going to sit in the unposted sales order or sales invoice. I can create and release it, which is going to do the same thing, but it's going to change the status or I can actually create and have it auto post. So as you can imagine, if I do that manually, it'll go straight to the posted table. But if I'm doing job queues, we can actually have that automatically post without us even being logged in. And then through other invoice and statement delivery features, uh, we can actually even send that automatically. So by having these recurrence uh, settings here, as well as having our out of box uh, invoice and statement delivery that you've already probably experienced, we can now fully automate this so that our customers are getting invoices uh, without even clicking any buttons, right? So those are the free, three functions there on the posting options. Next to current state, this is just going to uh, kind of help us determine when it needs to show up in our dashboard or on our job queue. So I'm going to do five one so that these all show up. And then the recurrence expiration date, this is going to be when it stops occurring. So I'm just going to put 2099 here so that we can fully test this through our system. But that would be um, if you want to attend at the end of the year because their subscription's up, you would just put that expiration date and then it would uh, stop sending them the invoices or the orders. So that's a little bit about setting up the actual invoices and orders. Again, the order is going to look very similar um, to your out of box order. Every, every field that's on your order is going to be here and they're all going to flow through to your standard order. Again, the main difference is being the wild cards here as well as the recurring settings. So now that we've got those set up, this is where you'd set everything up. Let's actually go to the dashboard. Now, you can see that we've got everything here. I'm going to do one create and post and one leave open option. So let's come into this recurring sales invoice real quick. So if you wanted to, you could click in, it's going to bring you into the template again, or you can just click generate sales document. I could select multiple if I really wanted to, it's going to say one has been generated and posted where applicable. So we did post this. So I'm going to go into my posted sales invoices. And again, we did for five one. So that should be right here. And you can see that it did monthly consulting fees for May 23, May 23, May 23, again here in the external document number, uh, and it posted um, on our 5-1 date, right? So all of that is working directly through our recurring template here that we've set up. So now if I go back to another one, let's go to one of these that we're gonna leave open. If I generate that sales document again, what this is going to do now is actually going to leave it open. So let's go to sales invoice. <clears throat> and we said, leave it open, don't release it. So again, you see May 23, May 23, May 23. And now it's being left open. It was not released. And at this point, now I could come in and actually post this invoice. So let's go back here. Let's go back to our template and see how things updated. So the two that we did were these two right here. 
Now you'll see again the external document. We've got those wildcards. Nothing's changing there. But what did change was the next occurrence date. So everything else that we haven't done, those are still left as 5 1 because we have not posted them yet. And everything else is going to be at a 6 1 date. So now if I were to come back in here and look at my recurring dashboard, let's refresh that. we look at this recurring dashboard, you'll notice that all those are gone because we are not within three days of six one. So it's actually going to only show us the things that need to be posted um, in the near future or that have already passed. So we're still only seeing things for five one for the next occurrence date. And we're not seeing anything that's being held out until six one. If I went up here <clears throat> and changed my work date, then tricking the system real quick, kind of into thinking that we're more into the future it would then show those documents. So let's go back into recurring dashboard. Now you're seeing everything again. So these are the two that we just posted and you'll see the next occurrence date is 6-1 because now the system thinks it's 6-1. So it's gonna post anything it has not posted yet that it should have, as well as anything that's uh, within the current parameters. So that's a little bit about how the recurring documents work, a little bit about the overview of the fields and how those fields update. And the next thing I want to go into is the actual job queues of how you could automate all of this at once. All right, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is come into this job queue, as I mentioned, and look for the generate recurring doc. So the object ID may be different. I'm running this in my local instance on my demo. So the uh, app source number here may be a little bit different, but just search for ERC ISD uh, and you should get all of the job queues that are related to our invoice and statement delivery function and uh, nothing unique here to our job queue, right? So you're just gonna come in, make sure that you've got the code unit there, make sure it's the ERC ISD, and then however you want this occurrence to run, right? So I've got next date formula, nice and easy. If you want it to run every day, um, you could have it run uh, every month. You could have it run on Mondays, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, and not on Saturdays and Sundays, right? So you can come in here and define exactly how the job queue is going to run for you, just like you do with out-of-box job queues. And then from there, those settings that we looked at back in the sales document, depending on if it's create and leave open, create and post or create and release, when that job queue runs, it's going to be running that action. So for anything create and post, it's actually going to automatically post all those invoices. Like I said, if you're using other ISD functions, you can also have those auto send to your customers. Otherwise, you can just have it create and leave it open. And when it runs, it's going to look for anything that would have hit in this dashboard based on those date parameters and it is going to create and post or create and leave open those documents. So that's it on our invoice and statement delivery recurring functionality. Again, like I said, it's fully functional with sales orders and sales invoices, really good for managing subscriptions, recurring billing, uh, any auto shifts like that Amazon and subscribe and save uh, functionality or example that we, we talked about. And then a lot of different options here on the recurring posting, uh, on the merge fields and the frequencies as well as the start and end dates. So we hope you got a lot of good information out of this and are ready to start using it in your environment. If you have any questions on our recurring documents or invoice and statement delivery in general, please feel free to reach out at any time. And if you have any good suggestions that you think could make any of our products or tools stronger, please feel free to drop us a message at any time. Thanks for listening and we hope to talk to you soon.